churchmilitant.tv. Join us in combat, become a premium member today. Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Here's a question. If a group comes to you specifically because you are Catholic, in fact, has access to you specifically because you are Catholic, and asks for money to help fight poverty, and then takes nearly 40% of that money and gives it to supposedly poverty-fighting groups who go directly against Catholic teaching, does that constitute fraud? Legally, is that fraud? And we're serious in asking that question. Any lawyers out there listening? At what point does a situation like what is going on at the Catholic Campaign for Human Development rise to the level of fraud? There must be a serious legal question in there somewhere. The CCHD, Catholic Campaign for Human Development, operating from within the bishop's headquarters in Washington, D.C., continues year after year to appeal to Catholics, not just anyone, but specifically Catholics, asking for money to fight poverty. Millions, millions of the dollars collected are then given to non-Catholic groups who aren't only non-Catholic, but are anti-Catholic in their activities. Why is this not fraud? Why doesn't the CCHD answer the questions directly about these groups? Do they really get to keep a non-profit status if they are perpetrating a fraud on the very people they're proposing themselves to be something more than what they are? At what point has a crime been committed here? Has a crime been committed? This year, private researchers from the American Life League unearthed scores of cases of socialist Marxist groups, pro-abortion groups, pro-same-sex marriage groups, pro-contraception groups that award millions of dollars, that are given millions of dollars in grants gotten from the faithful during the annual CCHD collection. They don't say that on the envelope. They don't send along an insert for the parish bulletin explaining those groups. They don't contact the local bishop or the pastor with a letter asking to be read at Mass detailing all of this. They just ask for money and then hand out nearly 40 cents of every dollar collected from unsuspecting Catholics in the pews to groups that advance moral evil. And then, when they are challenged on it, they refuse to answer any of the charges directly, meaning talking about how the individual groups and the evil that they participate in are awarded money. They just issue a press release saying, oh, these are just the same old things that are brought up every year. Yeah, so? Just because a charge is repeated doesn't mean it's wrong. In fact, the charges are repeated precisely because the activity keeps being repeated. Why is this agency in the bishop's headquarters in Washington, D.C. Washington, allowed to snub its nose at the very people asking for an account of their money and where it's going? It is one arrogant lot that runs this annual campaign. The hands-on director is a fellow named Ralph McLeod, who each year has to fend off these charges that he oversees the distribution of money to these groups advancing in morality. But that shouldn't be surprising. It's commonly known that he openly supported a pro-abortion Democratic candidate for a seat in the Texas State House who won and in the process unseated a pro-life legislator. McLeod was part of her campaign team. But back to the original question, isn't this fraud? If there are any lawyers out there watching this, can you please contact us and give us your take on it? To accept donations from people under the guise of helping end poverty and then giving a healthy portion of it to groups that promote something other than that seems like it should be illegal. And then to issue a memo that goes out nationally to local offices denying it but refusing to actually address the actual charges also seems like it should add another layer of criminality. I'm not a lawyer, but it sure seems like trying to involve others in a cover-up of fraudulent activity seems illegal, doesn't it? We've attached a link to a summary of the explosive report produced by the American Life League, which unearths all of this, as well as our churchmilitant.tv special report, where we interview in depth the team from American Life League that poured over all of this research and exposed this fraud or corruption or immorality or deceit or all of the above. Both the summary and the show are well worth your time and sharing it with all kinds of friends, Catholic family, friends, everybody. Want to know what's wrong with the church these days? Well, here is a sterling example. A group of social liberals running their own show like it's the Wild West, 
essentially unaccountable or never called to account, promoting moral evil under the pretense of doing some good and using your money to do it because they feel entitled to do what they want and you can just stay out of it. Then, when challenged, they issue statements calling others names, accusing them of being mean and uncharitable, and refusing to even talk about the specifics because they know they will be nailed to the wall if that discussion is allowed to happen. And then they refuse to meet. And of course, it's all done in the name of social justice. Oh, let's all bow down to the altar of social justice. To once again repeat the words of Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, Judas Iscariot is the patron saint of social justice. We'd like some legal opinion. Does this, does their activity, constitute fraud? God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Churchmilitant.tv. Join us in combat, like us on Facebook.